Hey. That was almost like screeching tires. Yeah. Hey. It's uh, <laughs> episode. 96. You're always off by one. That's fantastic. <laughs> uh, 95. 95. Of Alex and Jim. Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics. And that is what we do. Except for the eventually do. Yeah. Except for at all in part one of the last episode. <laughs> right. Yeah. Does that have to be detitled now? Um, so I may I've make made it a mystery. So will they talk about it? Uh yeah. And it's like Chekhov's gun if Chekhov forgot he had a gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's Chekhov's where did I put that gun? Yeah, and it's, I was, I had it on the dresser. I, oh, damn it, yeah. Where the <laughs> hell did I, oh, son of a gun. <laughs> uh, so we just, how was your Christmas? Um, It was, I was with my family. Is that a good answer? So not great. <laughs> not great. Not great. Stressful and a, a lot of work. Yeah, and that was your family mom, right? Mom and my sister separately. Because they don't like each other uh, and in different towns. Ah, uh, okay. Is that better that you don't have to deal with them all at once? Eh, it's better in this case because um, they don't like each other. Yeah. So if they were in the same town, it would be trouble even before I got there. Yeah. It's better That's... if it goes back to their separate corners. Obviously, I haven't. I don't want to get too deep into it, but just this question. How long have they not liked each other? Oh man, as long as I can remember, oh. it's been real intense for ten years. Okay. Say, yeah, yeah. And it only gets worse. Yeah. There's no ebb and flow. There's just it's all ebb, no flow. <laughs> all ebb, no flow, baby. Oh man, if you did stand up, that's the name of your album. That's a good comedy album title. All ebb, all ebb no, no flow. flow. Yeah, man. I might get into it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a shame. Or it's or it's perfectly fine. <laughs> It'll do. Yeah, it's just what End it up is. Really fine. Yeah. Um. So, but you get along with your sister. I do. And you get along fine with your mom. I have figured out how to operate that. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, New Year's Eve was great. Saw the old friends. Did the uh, stand around a fire pit in a Tucson backyard. Fantastic. Yeah. Can't beat that. Oh, yeah. Tucson's a great place to be for New Year's. Like, real proper amount of sky. Yeah. Yeah. How, it does feel like a New Year is upon you. How jarring is it? Because to me, it was jarring. Well, the last time I went to Arizona and remembered, and it felt like I was remembering this, that oh yeah, there are a lot of stars. Yeah, it's great, and it is a little jarring every time. Because New York, there's probably like four. <laughs> <laughs> there's four, and two of them are planes. Yep. Um, but you know, we do go upstate often enough to our friend Nadia's house, and it's there's a good sky there. Nice sky full of stars. So um, we get a taste every now and then, but nothing's like Tucson. Mm -mm. Um, as far That's... as that. When yeah. I was a kid, I didn't understand that Tucson. <laughs> there's was a, sorry, there. It is great that the best thing about Tucson is five billion light years away. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I forgot. I didn't know when I was a kid that Tucson is beautiful because I was just a kid and I was annoyed that there wasn't stuff to do or whatever. Sure. And as an adult, I get that it's beautiful and I still would never move back there. Yeah. We did a lot of talking about that while we were there. I like, couldn't yeah. live here. And then, you know, most of the time, no. And then you will like drive along sunrise, see those neighborhoods and be like, Oh, like maybe. Yeah. But then you I... go back to the hill and you're like, Nope. Yeah. I wonder how old you'd have to be, because I'm. I wonder, like, if I'm seventy, if I'd think, well, now I could. Yeah, I don't know. 
there's so many other good choices. That's the thing is Ireland That's then. I'd be if I was forced to move back there at gunpoint, I it would be a really weird thing for someone to do with their yeah, gun. I don't know why they did that. That's why I got a gun. <laughs> Make you retire here. <laughs> It'd and be you, fine. And they're gonna have to keep an eye on you too. They're gonna have to keep an eye on you too. Oh yeah. Because you could just move away if they if they if they if they if they fall asleep, you could just move back away. That's true. Oh, what a terrible plan this person had. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, hey, are you enjoying the uh, Denny's Denny's dinner? Huh? <laughs> uh, did you want free refills? Um, stars like the stars. <laughs> oh, hey, for my birthday, what gift I got? I went to a record shop. Nice. And I bought something for myself. I found a Billy Joel album on vinyl. And let me figure out which album it was. I was meant to bring it to the show, but it doesn't matter. Um, what's the one? Is there one called 52nd Street? There sure is. Okay, that's the one I got. I just don't trust my memory. Um, <laughs> but it's an original vinyl from whatever, whatever year that came in, still unopened. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's kind of cool, right? Cool. From 78? I yeah. Think. And had never been opened. Fantastic. Be because the guy who runs the record shop, I guess he bought uh, just a big, he bought a bundle of records at some estate sale or whatever. Oh. That include, and it was one of those, you get what you get kind of things. Yeah, for sure. And there was Billy Joel. So it was priced as if it was new. It was like 30 bucks or whatever. Yeah. More than worth it. I have a record player. Fantastic. Now, do you you remember the cover, right? Yeah. Do you know, do you remember what was on the back? Because I was surprised. Oh. I don't think I do. It's very weird. It's the lyrics to all the songs. Oh. Instead of inside on a sheet, the oh. back of the album was the lyrics. Wow. Great. Yeah, I kind of like it. Yeah, the backs of albums, especially his, there were a lot of interesting choices. Yeah. Huh. But that's weird, right? Do you? I can't think of another yeah, album that did that. Yeah, definitely liner notes. It was always inside on the sleeve or something. Right. Sometimes if it opened up, you'd have all the lyrics there. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I've seen that much. The, it, that's either a cool choice or it's, ah, I don't know what to put on here, which is what I think it really was. <laughs> Very likely. He only I thought of like one picture. Yeah, I I don't know what to do here. <laughs> but it's very cool. It's a beautiful album. It's new. Uh, it was one of my little birthday gifts to myself. There you was a plastic. I, uh, huh? You opened up the plastic and yeah. Uh, wow. Yep. Unopened shrink wrap. Very cool. There was a dog there. Um, and the dog was, it was, it's a great record store. The dog was sitting on the counter <laughs> and, uh, they said, oh, um, and this was on the seventh and they said, it's the dog's birthday tomorrow. <laughs> we both had the same birthday. Wow. I shared a birthday with the dog. <laughs> and then I said, as if I was saying something to a guy who owned a record store that he didn't know. Oh, you know, it's Elvis's birthday. This guy owns a record store. He knows that. He knows that, yeah. And then only basically I was like, you missed a trick. Your dog should have been named Hound Dog. Should have been Hound Dog. Yeah. Yeah. And then stormed out. Yeah. He <laughs> said, forget your dumb record store. <laughs> we bought so much vinyl from there. My friends who were with me bought vinyl and they're like, oh, it'll inspire us to go buy a record player. <laughs> So don't uh, think it will. They bought a copy of uh, Steve Martin's Let's Get Small. Oh, great. And uh, man, there's a track on there where he talks about fruits. <laughs> reference fruits? to the gay community. Oh, uh, yeah. It's jarring. Very jarring. It's jarring. <laughs> fruits. I don't think mean spirited, but boy, you heard it and you went, ah, 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 ah. Well, you live long enough. Yeah. You get in trouble. 
Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we picked this is ninety. This is episode ninety five. We picked. I picked surprises. Surprises. And Lord, is this a Beatles yep. song from the Nylon Curtain LP, mm -hmm. which he has said is his Sergeant Pepper inspired album. And, and yeah, it's, it's quite Beatlesy. It's very Beatlesy. It has a proper ending. Do I like? Right. <laughs> Yeah. It doesn't. Uh, you're the Beatles expert. Would you say it sounds like a Beatles song from Sgt. Pepper's? No. What album would you say it sounds like it's from? So it's definitely Beatles inspired, but it sounds more. First of all, I want to say this. I wrote two words down. There's a point when he does a lot of echo on his voice. Uh-huh. And he goes very in a, in the highest register he has. Yeah, he is channeling John. He sounds like John for a particular uh, phrase. Gotcha. So much so that it isn't even insulting. It's more like no, he just kind of sounds like him. He's not like doing an impression. No, it just sounds like he's doing what John would do. And all to lead into the answer to your question, it sounds more to me like an early Beatles solo album, like something oh. John did. Okay. Or Paul did. And, all, and but it sounds like something solo they both did. So it still feels Beatlesy, but it feels like um, you know, remember um we're so sorry. Uncle uh, Albert, which of course would be Wings, Paul McCartney. Sure. It has a little bit of that vibe of just very big, um, changing tempos. And I said this to you before we went to air. Uh, <laughs> In the green room. I liked the bridge. Yeah. And it does a Beatles thing. And this is where it does sound very Beatles. And maybe it is a little bit like Sergeant Pepper, maybe a little bit like Day in the Life, where in the middle it just changes, but it yep. works, except it's not that drastic because the change is very brief. It's really, when we talk about the lyrics, I'll remember exactly where, because it's one phrase that's sung different than the rest of it. Hmm. Okay, I look. You'll remember it when we look at the lyrics. Yeah, I don't remember it, but it does. It's not popping up. It's a little creepy. I like that. <laughs> it's a little creepy. Um, and, uh, but it's Beatles as fuck. It really is. It really is. Shamelessly so, but a real good version. Yeah, one of the closest as far as just kind of nailing that influence. You know, it's funny. It just occurred to me. Of course, it sounds like solo Beatles because he's aping the Beatles style a little bit. But we're coming out of the 70s because this would have been what, 80? Uh, 81? Yeah. Where we were just coming out of where you would have heard the Beatles solo sound, which was the decade of the 70s. Right. So a lifelong Beatles fan would be in that headspace. For sure. You know, it doesn't sound at all to me like something George would have done. So it sounds very much Paul and John, which means Beatles, because, of course, George was <laughs> right. depressed during the Beatles. <laughs> yeah. George was all acoustic guitars. Yeah. And he was, uh, yeah. And during the Beatles, he was the guy going, ah, could I get a second song? And they were like, no. What they said. <laughs> in the Beatles played the piano well anyone knew how or on records on records okay so Paul did Paul played a little for sure and he played a what um let it be as p uh largely piano right yeah yes yes and he plays piano on hey Jude okay did John ever play piano in the Beatles? I'm trying to guess in my head which Beatle Billy Joel would have <clears throat> associated himself with, but probably 
He bounced around like they all do, like all you fans do. Yeah. He probably bounced around in his fandom, but he's more like Paul than anybody else, if he's like yeah. anybody. Probably is more like Paul and probably wants to be John. Yeah. 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 So, Sarah Spieler and Cameron problem. Yes. We're all Camerons. <laughs> It's interesting, old uh, John Lennon, because he got much less um, career driven. Well, um, everybody, including John, said that the band wouldn't have made nearly as many albums if it wasn't for Paul, because Paul was the one who made them go to work. Yeah, and uh, which is very Billy Joel. Billy Joel just worked; he just did yeah. his job. And but also towards the beginning. John got all his ideas on records. Hmm. So any idea he had for a Beatles song, all of the early discs, John could do whatever he wanted. So he probably got a lot of that shit out of his system. Very good chance. Yeah. Paul is just, Paul just kind of liked to keep going. Of course, George's first solo album is by considered by most people the best solo Beatles album, All Things Must Pass. Well, of right. course it was. It was fucking 20 songs those idiots wouldn't listen to. <laughs> yeah, it was his life's work. Yeah, so of course he had more to say for a little while. And John was coming around to having something to say because he had opinions about being older. Mainly, he liked it. Right. Then, fuck. Somebody had to be awful. Well, because those would have been good albums. He would have would have been like the Tillerman and um, Yusuf Islam's later albums when he was like more understood he who he was. Yeah. Cat Stevens, for those of you who don't know, Better. but I, I couldn't yeah. I literally couldn't remember the name Cat Stevens, but I couldn't remember <laughs> Yusuf Islam. It was a real good PR move for him to change it back. Yeah, but I do like it in. If you don't mind me starting, just because I love the first, I love all the lyrics. I pre-read them because we haven't recorded in like three weeks. <laughs> but um, have you got them uh, loaded up? Loaded up. So I, I don't know. I th fucking love these lyrics. Don't get excited. Don't say a word. Nobody noticed. Nothing was heard. And then I like this just because of the way it rhymes. It was committed discreetly. It was handled so neatly. And it shouldn't surprise you at all. I have no idea what that's about. No idea. I think um, I, feel, I feel set up like I'm going to find out. Yeah. It's, it's nice and cryptic. Nice and cryptic. It's nice linguistics. Yeah. Committed discreetly is very uh, is a good Beatles phrase. Yeah, I like that it ends with that little, you know, you know, no, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just really if you, if you didn't know who he was aping, <laughs> yeah, that would that would clue you in? It would blow. Yeah, it was committed discreetly and it was handled so neatly. As sung, it's a good lyric by itself, but the way he sings it is great. It's creepy. It's creepy and great. Yeah. And uh, again, he's taking high status, telling somebody else how to feel and handle things. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I have no idea what what's being handled or this, why it surprised this person. And this is a good not knowing. This is not a uh, yeah. writing. You're you're meant to be left in an ambiguous place with these lyrics right and you can tell yeah that, he, that you're supposed to be right so you don't like it. sometimes you get that nervousness like did he do this wrong <laughs> Am i stupid yeah. and you're like nope i know exactly what's happening yeah keep me in the dark until you're done break all the records burn the cassettes I'd be lying if I told you that I had no regrets. Great. Yeah. There were so many mistakes, and what a difference it makes. But still, it shouldn't surprise you at all. 
you know <laughs> said it shouldn't surprise you at all still don't know what's happening yeah now here's the um part where the music changes this is that phrase oh yeah in fact this will be the this will be my next lyric is just me reading this line and then it'll be your turn because i love the line don't look now but you have changed your best friends wouldn't tell you. Great. That's really cool. And now you get, don't look now, but you have changed. And I, so I like, you know, it's a cliche to tell somebody else that they've changed, right? Yep. I like that unpleasant revelation that no, I've changed. Oh no. <laughs> and you you get that feeling sometimes like when you when it suddenly dawns on you that you're like oh i don't like to go to bars anymore or whatever it is <laughs> right yeah 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 or and okay with it. huh and you're okay with it yeah or the That's one for me is when i realized that not only has my sex drive gone down but i'm really relieved <laughs> <laughs> right it's really opening up a lot of different avenues. Yeah. And it's weird <laughs> because you were so driven by that one thing for so long, you know, just. Oh, yeah. And sort of living in fear that it would go away. Yeah. Like, I don't know what I'll do if I don't have that. Yeah. And you're like, oh, think. That's neat. Oh, think and work and laugh and yeah. <laughs> Be good yeah. company. Lynch. Yeah. Um, it also, this little segment reminded me of. Oh, there's a very specific Beatles lyric that I'm losing. Um, I'm very sleepy, first of all. <laughs> Something is easy with eyes closed. Living is easy with eyes closed. Misstand misunderstanding all you see. Yeah. <laughs> For whatever reason, this those two lines made me immediately. Strawberry think fields. Of, Strawberry fields. Um, yeah, there's some correlation in the staccato change. Yep. change. Yes. Ooh, and you just made me remember the other song it kind of sounds like. It's, uh, can't think of the title. I believe it's the Paul McCartney, Screw You, John Lennon song. <laughs> that was your first mistake. Oh. And it has that same... Oh wow! Because <laughs> that was John's song, I believe, is called "How Do You Sleep." Is oh. the one where he's mad at Paul. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Which has the lyric, "The only good thing you ever did was yesterday." Boo! Boo. But still, kind of great because then we're like, "That's oh, fun that the two Liverpudlians are mad at each other." <laughs> yeah. You can take the boys out of Liverpool. But you're right. It definitely has a little vibe of um, Strawberry Fields. Interesting. Uh, yeah, and yeah. even in the way it's produced, because uh, that John Lennon thing of uh, John Lennon did that a lot in the Beatles later stuff and in his solo stuff, he really liked to key up the echo, to key up those kind of effects. Yeah. It's really well done. Yeah. And also, by the way, we still don't know what's going on, do we? I don't think so. Other than it, it's it, the only guess I have is midlife crisis. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think it has something to do with musicians and being in the music business. Uh huh. Like break all the records and burn the cassettes is not a metaphor. Right. Pretty literal. Yeah. Like, he's maybe mad at how he's not as good at music as he wants to be. <laughs> uh, um, that creative frustration of like, God damn it. I might just be saying that because that was my day today. It was oh. like, you know, some days you're just like, oh, I'm not funny anymore. Yeah. Broke it. And I don't know <laughs> where to get it back or how to start. And it's yeah, God damn it. it's, it's the opposite crazy... of running a bike. Dude, I get that feeling. Yeah, where you're like, will I think of another joke? Yeah. And then you do, and you're like, okay, okay. Okay. 
I can breathe for another day. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, put the clock facing you down. Yeah. Yeah, damn it. How did I do this yesterday? <laughs> that was my day today. Uh, yeah. So I'm no surprise it all worked out. Of course, because yeah. you're funny. So oh, still. thank you. You're a nice it's, man. It's stressful when it's not popping right out of your head, you know? Yeah. Because, you know, at, at this point, I've hung a lot on that. Yes. <laughs> I got well, really doing that. My in my experience too is that when you stress and wonder, am I good at this? Oh, that's so helpful. <laughs> yeah, it's very helpful. That's the jokes come flooding in. Yeah, everything just loosens up. <laughs> it's like uh, trying to catch a fish in your hand. It's like, please, yeah. <laughs> it super hard. That'll help. <laughs> now it's apparent. Now it's a fact. So marshal your forces for another attack. You were so young and naive, I know it's hard to believe, but now it shouldn't surprise you at all. You know, you know <laughs> it shouldn't surprise you at all. I love marshal your forces for another attack. So do I. Because does it mean get your army together and prepare to attack, or does it mean to defend from an attack? Because it could mean either thing. Yeah, you're right. And uh, I still, again, we don't quite know what's going on, who's under attack, and from what. And because I'm getting the impression from, by the way, nice lyric shape. <laughs> Lovely shape. Very poetic. <laughs> from the lyrics we've read already, I'm like, I feel like it's, I feel it's defensive, but also I feel it's both because I feel like it's, Prepare for the attack you keep leveling against yourself. Because I I feel an internal struggle here, not, yeah. I'm not anything out there. And I base that partly on break all the records, burn the cassettes. Yeah. So I it, think this is self-loathing. You in your house. Yeah. The studio. Yeah, you're not happy with what you're doing. Or but you you do it again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there is a, uh, as it was before, it shall ever be. Yeah. Kind of vibe. I, yeah. There's, see, the frustration. there's so many times when he does write a clunky lyric or whatever, and granted, you're going to over such a long career, but none of this I don't like. I like all this. It's uh, beautiful. Yeah. I like yeah. the music, although I said before we started, and I stand by this, I like the writing of the music. It's definitely of its era where it just feels electronic and it feels a little colder than it should. Yeah. It's of the, like, particularly in the 80s, people just fell in love with these fucking drum machines and <laughs> electronic. Yeah. Because you're talking about Billy Joel, who's a brilliant pianist. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't know it from this song. No, no. What has it cost it's you? Still, sorry, but it still feels like stripped down. Yes, Just for sure. Production and electronica. It's uh, it's pretty sparse. Agreed. I, it's it's not a criticism of the song. It's more a criticism of the era. <laughs> I like the sparseness of it. I'm just like, I feel like I might have enjoyed uh, warmer instrumentation. But you know what? Maybe then you wouldn't have had the creepy. Maybe I'm just wrong. Yeah, I might have taken the creepy out. Maybe that, yeah. I might just be wrong. It's just that sound bothers me. But I grew up in that era and got real sick of it. So <laughs> yeah, it might be that because it's still, it works for me. And again, the bridge part where the way he's phrasing it gets all floaty mm -hmm. and even more creepy. I'm in. I love it. Right. Um, what has it cost you and what have you won? The sins of the fathers are the sins of the sons, which, by the way, is a very weird version of 
the the Hebrew saying. It's just very weird how it's a twist of that. And I wonder if that's intentional. It has to be, right? Yeah, I think so. Because this the Hebrew, of course, is the sins of the fathers are not the sins of the sons, the, and neither are the sons the sins of the sons, the sins of the father. Rather, everyone should suffer for their own sins. This is rather asserting exactly the opposite, and it feels intentional. Yeah. I don't, the other thing is we always say that this feels like a mistake. None of this song feels like a mistake. Yeah. This feels like he was laser focused on this is what this is. Yep, I agree. And I think the fact that it's uh, take on this Hebrew expression and the fact that his father was a, mu a frustrated musician. <laughs> yeah. Also a big part of this. And then this next lyric after Sins of the Sons, I like, it was always within you. It will always continue. And that doesn't seem like a positive. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But it shouldn't surprise you at all, you know. I said it shouldn't surprise you at all, you know. Look how heavy those lyrics are. Look how deep they are. And yet look how beautifully sparse they also are. Yes. That's not a lot to say so much. True. And it really is like a poem in that it doesn't give you all the parts. Right. It doesn't explain anything to you necessarily so much as make you feel a way right um which is not really his stock and trade no it's usually it will tell you a whole story and then tell you how to feel about it <laughs> um with times and places and names yeah this is more like here is a vague feeling that i have that you probably also have and he nails it here. So here's a question for you about this song. I hate to stay on topic so much, but... <laughs> We're really on board today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, I'll tell you my theory afterwards, but I want to know yours. Do you think this was something he labored over? I bet yes. Okay. I bet, because the lyrics are so in shape. And they're so, or it was one of those things that like appeared in his brain relatively whole. And he was like, my lucky day. That's what I think. Very, also very possible. Because this feels, it feels so good and it feels really organic. Yeah. It's <laughs> either super organic or he worked on it so, you know. When you put in all the work to make it look like there was no work put in. Yeah. It's one but of that them. definitely not his strong suit. No, no. His strong suit is to do 85% of the work and then go, eh, good enough. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. I think I'm just wrong about the instrumentation the more I think about it. Because I just think I just don't like the 80s because I grew up there. I just wonder if it was the more traditional instrumentation, how much it would even sound like a Beatles song. Yeah. Which I think, obviously, he was very much going for. So you're going for the, yeah, because because if you really, some of the songs he does are just like, it sounds a little bit like a, but it's just in, inspired. This is meant to sound like a Beatles song. Yeah, and he does it way better then he did the his Frankie Valley. <laughs> yes. His Frankie yeah. Valley ain't even close, and no offense, because I know that's the one he most wanted to get, but no, I she should be happiest with this. This one just is uh underappreciated album. My God, underappreciated album. And um uh, all gems. Yeah, you could understand why this wouldn't be a hit. But at the same time, if it was, it wouldn't surprise you. The only reason you understand it is because we all know people are stupid. <laughs> right. And it was not built for the times. Yeah. And it's a perfect piece. Like, it's three minutes, four minutes. You could play this yeah. fucker on the radio. It'd be no problem. Lately. I wonder if it got any play. Probably not. I don't know. And it's funny. Now that we've listened, now I've listened to it, we've reviewed it, I'm like, 
I put this on my regular Billy Joel list of just things that I will casually listen to because I like it a lot. Yeah. And yeah. I don't think I realized it either because I think I missed it. Yeah. I, you know, it's one of those that I hear once in a while. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to remember that. And <laughs> it does go away somehow. Yeah. Um, but I always, from the same album, uh, go back to Scandinavian Skies. Yeah. Similar vibe, a similar, like, oh, I'm going to do a Beatles production moves. Yeah. Um, but this is better. Hey, do you like Sting? I'm just asking you real quick. Do you like Sting, right? I most of the time. Okay. I, uh, I like Billy Joel are doing a show together. What's that? They are? Yeah, they're doing a show together in San Diego. Oh, wow. Fun. I don't know. Do we get tickets and show up together? <laughs> when is it? Uh, it's the problem is it's soon, so it's hard to work out work because <laughs> it's like April or something. Oh yeah, well, hard well, it's not out. that soon. It's doable. Let's investigate it. Yeah, you love Sting. I do. I love Billy Joel more. I I do. <laughs> I do love Sting. There's some of his lyrics. Murder by Numbers is one of my favorite songs. It's just like uh, just sparse mean spirited funny yeah that's the one i that's the version of him i like yeah and then there's some cloying that comes later yeah englishman in new york do you like that that was great right nice um nice one. i like his country song no i don't know it do I i'm know so it? happy i can't stop crying <laughs> don't know that one it's I'm probably under, underexposed to sting he had this, so Garth Brooks covered a um, Billy Joel song and, of course, had a hit with it, right? Right. Well, I don't know who the artist is, but a country artist covered um, Sting's country song. And, of course, it was a much bigger hit. Huh. Because country stations were like, and we ain't playing this guy's country song. Fuck you. <laughs> and his regular fans were like, we don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> whereas i like what's great about it when i say it's a country song it's got a slide guitar oh the whole thing yeah it's absolutely just a country song in the video he's wearing a cowboy hat and but it's futuristic and there's aliens and cowboy hats it's really very weird <laughs> oh my god the video era yeah it's got this lyric that i really like got a, a call today uh, got a call today from my lawyer, Mr. Good News. He got me <laughs> joint custody and legal separation. Fuck. And apparently it really is about his divorce. <laughs> so it's a friend of mine called me up and said, how you doing? I said, well, I'm so happy. I can't stop crying. It's great. It's great. It's a great country title for sure. It feels like he was thinking about your your my favorite era of country 60s yeah it's that era of just really unapologetic emotionalism and, yep. and one hook one hook for the song and that's it yep. some very easy to access wordplay yeah you'd like it look it up all you know what i will link to it for the fans of our show Sting, I'm so happy. I just, I can't stop crying. <laughs> yeah, no, I really, yeah, I like, I like Sting a lot. Some of his, you know, the albums where he's just being all jazzy. Yeah. Hmm, not so much. I don't want to know. Fields of Gold. I like Fields of Gold. Fields of Gold. You hate that one, eh? Don't love it. It's fine. He's, you know, he's a good songwriter, so it always sounds pretty good. Yeah. Um, my watch is telling me to stand up. Not going to do it. Is it a medical thing? No, it's just an exercise thing. Oh, okay, good. Stand up once an hour. Okay. It's probably yeah. good advice, but no, screw you, watch. <laughs> watch someone push me around. <laughs> yeah, I really... This was interesting as a song because it's just so tight too it's really tight really tight yeah there's no it could have been like two verses too long yeah it's all I, set 
I like that we're not sure what it's about. I am pretty convinced it's an internal struggle. I don't think it's an external struggle. I like it. I'm trying to think of other songs of his where it's just like, here is a feeling without yeah. much information. And I don't feel like there are a ton of them. Mm -mm. Sure, there are others, but I can't think of any offhand. And this, well, I certainly can't think of one that's like that and nailed it. Yeah, also true. Yeah, because this one just is right across the plate. Perfect on, little song. On point. Yeah. Good job, Billy Joel. Yeah. By the way, just don't say as, that enough. As a uh, uh, palate cleanser, it just couldn't be easier. Uh, motorcycle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, moving out. No, well, that's effect. a good one. Um, it's a specific kind of motorcycle, and that should give it away. Is it a shovel head? <laughs> uh, no, but you got the right song. <laughs> okay. Electro slide. Electro slide, yep. Nice. Yeah. Just a nice, easy, hey, we've been off for three weeks. <laughs> House of Blue Lights. That's real nice of you. Yeah. So you that's what they look like. They're not, I, not as cool as I would have thought. They're not. Motorcycles aren't as cool as you think. No. I or, mean, sometimes they look cool. No part of riding one would, sounds good to me. No. No. No, I knew a I knew a guy who flipped his motorcycle over an embankment and fell all the way down off the freeway. You know how it'll yeah. Sure. And then and uh then when did I see him next? At his services. So oh. not a big fan of that of that. No, when I'm going 70, I like to be indoors. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, please. I wish car drivers were nicer to motorcycles because then you could enjoy being on a motorcycle. But there's also lunatics in cars yep. that are mad that you're on a motorcycle. Yeah. Not realizing how fragile you are. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, speaking of Sting. Yeah. Um, and also that... Hey, yes, he's getting somewhere faster. That it's not his fault that you're not. Totally. And he's like, look, he's taking a big risk to do it. Yep. Do you want the same risk in your life? No, you don't. No. And he's better for the environment. So let him do his thing. Yeah, man. Let's, let's coexist, bro. But that's all big. But the fact that that'll never happen is one of the many reasons I won't ride a motorcycle. Um, I we had three weeks off, and I ended up not picking a very easy trivia question, <laughs> um, which I now feel bad about. No, that's okay. Uh, <clears throat> we know that my life was used as a TV theme song. Yes, show Bosom Buddies, which we like very much. Um, did you know that another Billy Joel song was used for a TV theme song? And can you name that song or the? Mid '90s CBS sitcom, short-lived, <laughs> that it was used for. All right, hold on, let me sneeze. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Vampire Wait. sneeze. If you watch our show, that's a regular feature. Yep. I'm Jim. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it was a mid '90s show. So let me ask a question. Uh huh. Is it a well-known Billy Joel song? It is very well known. Okay. That helps less than you'd think. Uh, it really does. Uh, Vienna? Uh, no. Battle of Billy the Kid, and it was a sitcom about Billy the Kid transports to the future, and he owns a drugstore. <laughs> I will tell you... Uh... It was a song from Glass Houses. Okay. Maybe the most famous one. Still uh, rock and roll to me? Maybe right. You may be. Ah, oh, yes. Maybe right. You Who was in this damn show? I don't know, but I'm going to look that up next. But it was used for the CBS mid 1990s sitcom Dave's World. About, about Dave Barry? 
I'll bet you're right. I bet it's that stupid Dave Barry show. Dave's World sitcom. Fuck, I forgot that existed. And it, yeah, and it's Harry Anderson? Dave's World. Well, there's a, <laughs> there are a lot of things called Dave's World on the internet. Sitcom. Harry Anderson. I was, oh my God. So that's funny that I remembered all of yeah. that part. I said short-lived. It had four seasons. Yeah. Well, we see, said, I would have got it if you if you hadn't said short-lived. I was thinking about a short-lived show. Jesus Christ. Harry Anderson. Meshach Taylor. Yeah. Shadow Stevens. <laughs> Patrick Warburton. Wow. Killer lineup. B. Arthur. Oh. Holy shit. Now, I have a theory why that show uh, lasted four seasons, but no more. And here's a quick trivia question for you, because this oh. is actually something you could answer. I think something in real life ruined that show. Hmm. Hmm. Was it Dave Barry? <laughs> yes, but what specific? What did he do? I don't know anything about Dave Barry except that he wrote those dumb humor books. Yeah, so Dave Barry was a humorist, which is, if you don't know what a humorist is, uh, it's like a comedian, but not as funny. Right. Um, that's what a humorist is. But, um, you know, Irma Bombeck and all that shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do, you, do you think, by the way, that Dave Barry and Irma Bombeck ever fucked? No, that's not a real question. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the title of one of their books. Yeah. They're really it's, long titles. It's a picture. They're both naked having sex, but they're both going. It's one of those. <laughs> oh, um, <nice>. So <laughs> that's, that's it. That's it. <laughs> No, Dave Barry was a humorist, a uh, very relatable humor humor of a family man. So what did he do in real life to kind of ruin the show? Oh, did he get divorced? That's it. Nice. And That's I think, one. yeah, and I remember at the time, because uh, Goble liked that show, if I remember correctly. And if you remember about Goble, one of the things that's always been true of him is he's kind of an incurable romantic. He likes the idea of relationships that work right i think why so mad yeah i for real like honestly some of the angriest people you've ever met are people who were kind of optimistic about life and then life kept showing them different yeah yeah but uh but i remember he liked that show and then suddenly they're divorced and he's and i remember him saying he thought the show felt like a lie now <laughs> it was it was it was always a lie but yeah yeah, yeah it was always a lie. You're not supposed to tell me, though. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, life. Dave's world. Dave's world. Wow. I got every trivia question except the one you asked. <laughs> <laughs> and you only got that wrong because I got the information wrong. <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. There. I had no shot. But in the 90s, Four Seasons was short-lived. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, in Britain. That's four seasons, four, four um, series. <laughs> all right what's uh what's our next song what are we doing next buddy that's a good question because we're running low <laughs> and did we do through the long night pretty sure we did let me look I feel like we're done pretty sure we did let me go back and look at that one thing i now ask you that same question about five other songs <laughs> Feel like we did because we talked about how pretty it is yeah we did that one that's a good tune you know good did tune. We do awesome. souvenir which one souvenir souvenir let me look it up Hold on. i don't think it. so i don't think we did yeah, and I think one of the reasons we didn't, I think we toyed with it, and it's so small. It is his shortest song. But uh, all that means is it's more time to talk about my sciatica. 
<laughs> or medical chat. <laughs> I'll try to book some appointments between now and then. Yeah. When you're a kid, when you're a young comic, it's funny to make fun of people talking about their sciatica. Uh huh. Because number one, you don't know what a sciatica is at that age. You're like, just it's a funny word. Yeah. Oh, medical thing, real quick. What do you I got? I tore something here. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just hurts. And I can't put my arm in back of me. And every now and then what will happen is Tinkerbell, what my dog, well, she'll be in the back seat of my car. And I'll forget that this hurts. And I'll uh, reach back to pet her. And it's cool. excruciating. And it freezes me. It's not just that it hurts. It's that it doesn't stop hurting. Yeah. So I have to wait it out. Well, I've been doing physical therapy. Yeah. The other day, I took my dog in a car ride. I was just having a nice ride. I reached back, pet my dog, driving, and it suddenly hit me. I cried. I literally started to cry a little bit because gone, pain gone. Wow. Amazing. I didn't think that was an option anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, you get to an age where you're like, oh, I'm not going to heal from this. Yeah. No, look. Add this to my burdens. Look at that. Look at that. The beauty of physical therapy. Nice work. Don't now, over... It shows how dumb I am because I just lived with it for the longest time because I was like, well, there's probably nothing you can do. Right. Or if they do, if there is something I can do, it's probably something severe like surgery. Surely it's not light stretching. <laughs> how could that fix anything? <laughs> <laughs> Surely it's not less than five minutes a day. Listen, this is very inspirational because I have, I have 10 or 15 things that I was assuming I'm just going to take with me. You might not. Maybe I can leave three or four behind. That would be great, right? Great. I'm going to look into it. Lord, I, Lord, all of you, I hope you stop having your dumb little pains. Yeah, man. Get it checked out. 